Well, hello there. Welcome once more to Crunchwell's Kitchen. And if this is your first time stopping by, I would like to say a very warm welcome to you. Dear friends, it's going to be very simple. Today, I'm just going to be making some fried yam and fried fish. This is what I am craving, and so I'm going to do just that. So I have here some red snapper. Two of those, I'm going to just core them or make these incisions. This helps to fry it to be crispy. It also allows the marinade to, or seasoning to get in here. And so your fish tends to get better seasoned this way when you have these slits in here. So I'm going to do the same with the second one and then I will go ahead and marinate. I'm going to be adding some salt. So I have some cayenne pepper, white pepper, ginger and garlic powder. And I'm just going to go ahead and apply this to the fish. This is going to bring a lot of flavor, fragrance or aroma and of course a bit of spice to my fish. Just make sure it's all very coated. Get some in here. Of course, you want every part of this fish to taste good. Wrap some into the incisions as well. Then set it aside to marinate and then we'll focus on our yam. So here's my yam. Let's just hope it's good. Oh, perfect. I think I'm gonna tackle this part since it's gonna be easier on me. Can you smell the aroma? From was In my bowl is some cold water. I'm going to start cutting up my yam. I like to cut mine to be like french fries. So as you see, I cut my yams to be on the longer side. So and now I'm going to just go ahead and slice through it, make it a little bit thinner. And then I'll cut through like matchsticks or, you know, like french fries, just like so. I love my yam to have some crisps on the outside, but still very uh, soft on the inside, you know, a chinny but in more And so cutting it this way allows me to have it just the way I want it. You want to put them into water almost as soon as you cut them because oxidization starts taking place almost right away and it changes color. The water is pretty cold, so it's helping. So the yams are all cut up. I'm going to start heating my oil and then I'll go ahead and rinse out the yams. I'm going to wash the yams. Water is ice cold. <laughs> so. This is just going to be what we will use to soak it. In recent times, I've been adding a little bit of sugar to my fried yam so this is two teaspoons of sugar I'm going to add some salt as well you still need a perfect balance because fried yam if it doesn't have enough salt it's not going to taste good for you either 
so I'm just stirring to make sure my salt and sugar dissolve in here and I could have also done that first that makes it easier so make a solution before you put your yams in there okay let's test to see if our oil is ready so I'm using a skewer and once it gets inside and you see little bubbles around the skewer or kebab stick you know that it's ready all right let's start frying our yams remember the oil is very hot so the yam goes in always away from you So once everything is in, you want to stir and try to spread it out. Make sure that they are well spread out in the oil so it fries beautifully. In typical cook with me fashion, let's go and make our pepper whilst this fries. So for our pepper, we are going to be using about a quarter of this onion, pepper, little piece of ginger because it makes your meko yawa so good, two plum tomatoes, and I'm going to use some of the sardine in here as well as the oil gonna cut we like onion so for half of the onion so this goes into my blender no not into my asanka blender I don't like making my pepper in the asanka it's just too much work why make it so much difficult when it's almost the same taste anyway so into the blender it goes i'm also going to add my ginger here i'm just cutting it into little pieces so it's easier to blend and i don't have strings in it yes a little bit of ginger goes a long way it brings so much flavor in your pepper i really hope you've tried this before if you haven't please try it tomatoes barely have any seeds which is good <laughs> My yam at this point has fried for about five minutes it is beginning to crisp up but it still has a few more minutes to go so i'm going to go back to my pepper and get it done so i'm going to be adding some sardine here yes this is so good so so good i really hope you give this a try if you've never done this before so to make this lit mekoyawa i'm going to be adding one sardine as well as some of the oil from the can to it this makes it so good i tried this at a friend's house and i have been doing it quite a lot of in these days i've added some salt as well always according to your taste and yet still i'm going to set this aside because i have to check the yams again so it has fried for an extra three minutes so almost eight minutes of cooking or frying and it has pretty much crisped up it is almost all done but I am just going to stir it, make sure that it's not burning and let it cook for about two more minutes and that way I'll be able to finish my pepper as well. Yes, real multitasking. So here goes our pepper. Mekopre <laughs> man. So our yams are beautifully fried now, ready to come out of the oil. Just look at how golden, very, very crispy. This is fried to perfection, just the way I love it. Just the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> just listen to it go into this colander, okay? Just listen, listen right here. That crunch should tell you something. There. so i'm going to drop my fish in the same oil still very hot the fish has been able to marinate for about 20 minutes at least so you can be assured that it's going to come out very very flavorful so i tried this 
at a friend's house and trust me it's the best thing that you would ever have this is what we call flavored mekwenyirawa mekwenyirawa preman not as red as it would typically be because of course of the sardine and the ginger tastes so good so good so our fish has cooked for about four minutes now i'm going to turn it because i'm just going to be cooking it about four to five minutes on each side and that is just how much it's going to take for it to be done so i'm trying to flip it now so the top side gets to be crispy as well the bottom side as you can see is looking perfect Easy does it. There we go. So the fish is perfectly fried now and ready to come out of the oil. I'm going to be transferring this onto a plate lined with paper towel. But even before it goes on the plate, I'm trying to drain as much of the oil off before I do that. And that pretty much is it. This is all it takes. Very simple, very quick, and yet something that is so much well enjoyed i really hope you enjoyed doing this with me thank you so much for watching please like and share this video and until i come your way next time with something delicious be loving be kind be happy